Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to another episode of Hugh C. Fishing. In this little episode, I want to talk to you guys about swim jigs. I just posted a video like a week or two ago, maybe, uh, fishing swim jigs on Lake Conroe, catching a lot around docks. Super fun way to fish. If you guys didn't see it, check it out. I'll put it up in the top right-hand corner right here. Uh, so let's just get right into it. I want to talk about the rod, the reel, the line, uh, different kinds of swim jigs for different purposes, uh, color, trailer, um, and a couple of modifications that I make to them to be able to fish them correctly. So let's just get right into it. So swim jigs are a great way to uh, cover a lot of water up shallow. Uh, you can cast them pretty much anywhere, pretty much a four by four um, type of bait. You can throw them up around grass, uh, up around trees, brushes, whatever you want, docks, um, and they really come through well. But there's two main ways that I really like to fish them. And what that's gonna be is up shallow, like up really high in the water calm. And that's what I was doing in that last video where I'm shaking my rod a lot. I'm keeping the swim jig within like less than a foot of the surface. And then the other way I'm gonna fish them is casting it out and just slow winding it in. There's kind of key differences between the way I fish them and how I select the trailer and the colors for those. So what I was doing in that last video is I was throwing a swim jig. I was, it's called cracking the whip, the Alabama shake, whatever you want to call it. But it's shaking your rod really quick, reeling it in. And um, I was using a, that was actually a rod we're testing for castaway. That was a 7.3 heavy. Um, but I actually most of the time use a, the Skeleton Nano Grassmaster Braid, which is kind of like a 7.3 heavy as well. With that Grassmaster Braid rod, I had it paired up with the Shimano Corrado K200 size. Um, that was their fastest one. I think it's called the XGHG, something like that. It's like the 8.2 to 1 gear ratio. And if you're not familiar with gear ratio, uh, it's 8.2 to 1. So for every one turn of the handle that I make, the spool will turn 8.2 times. So the higher the number, the quicker you're going to be able to reel that bait in. And that was really key for keeping the bait up high in the water column. With that setup, I was using a uh, 20-pound fluorocarbon. I'll really only use braid if I'm up around like super thick cover, like if I'm fishing up like mats and stuff like that, some reeds, but around docks I could get it out pretty easy. So uh, I was only fishing 20 pound fluorocarbon with that. So this was the actual swim jig that I was using in that video. This is a six cents uh, braid, divine braid swim jig. Uh, it's in a five sixteenths ounce weight. Um, I had been using the heavier one, which I think I think is a it's either a half or a seven sixteenths or something like that. Something really close to half ounce. And I was using that. And that's what I had always been using. And I realized that um, I was missing a lot of fish because I think it was going too low to the bottom. And it, it was really hard to keep it up high. I would have to reel it really fast. But with this five sixteenth ounce, I wouldn't have to reel it very fast. I wouldn't have to move it horizontally as much to keep it uh, high up vertically. And one of the key things with this swim jig, uh, cracking the whip and stuff like that, is to get it up around the cover or up under the cover. And you can see in that video when I was fishing docks, I was able to skip this super far, and that's because I paired it up with the stroker craw. You can see the stroker craw is like super flat on the bottom, and that allows it to skip perfectly. Um, if you think about it, whenever you're trying to skip rocks on the lake, um, you always want to pick like a really flat, skinny rock, so it'll skip really far, nothing will catch on the water. And this is like the perfect combination to be able to skip up under docks or trees. Now I said, uh, talking about trailers. So with that kind of fishing, I really like going with a craw type trailer. And craws with a lot of action, especially because they will cause a lot of drag in the water. So you won't have to, so keep it really high up in the water column. So you don't really have to pull the bait that far to keep it up high. Uh, and to keep it up high, that also really helps with this flat bottom, like I was talking about for skipping. Um, it really keeps it up high in the water column. And talking about colors, um, I really like throwing white swim jigs whenever I'm doing that. White and black and blue are my two colors for uh, cracking the whip, Alabama shake, whatever you want to call it. Uh, those are my two favorite colors for that. And it's usually because I like fishing them, I like doing that in dirty water. When the water's dirtier, the fish can get up shallower. This is a super shallow water technique. 
and it works really good. Those docks are efficient. We're only in like a foot or two of water at most. So this is a really good uh, technique for super shallow, dirty water. Um, and that is completely different than the other type of swim jig that I'm gonna talk about in a second, which is like fishing it a little deeper. So like I was just saying, that first technique is a pretty dirty water tactic. Um, the other type of swim jig uh, fishing that I like to t do is more clear, clear water fishing. And it's usually around submerged grass or even uh, some emerging grass like lily pads or something like that. Um, and what I really like to do is use a more natural color. Because the water is clear, um, I really don't like going with that black or blue or white swim jig. Um, those are more dirty water colors, so I really want to go natural with this one and go like a green pumpkin, kind of like that. Kind of imitating a bluegill. There's a lot more bluegill up around the grass than there are shad in the grass. So like I said, for the white swim jig and the Alabama shake, you really want a trailer that has a lot of action so you can keep it up high in the water column. But this is completely different. We want to keep this bait low in the water column, close to where the fish are at, taking the submerged grass. So for that reason, I'm going to use more of a swim bait style trailer that won't have as much action, but still has some action. And I really want to match the colors up. So if I'm throwing a green pumpkin swim jig, I really want to throw a green pumpkin swim bait on the back of it. The rod's going to be a little bit different for this one. Um, since uh, we're not making as target-oriented uh, casts as the other method. Um, a shorter rod for the other method is a lot better for accurate casts, but this one we're more casting it and winding it, so we don't have to be as accurate if we're fishing like a grass line. We don't have to get it within a single like foot or we're going to completely miss it. This one is it's okay if we don't cast like right on it. So for that reason, I'm going to use a little bit longer of a rod. I'll probably go to like a 7.6, medium-heavy, something like that. For the reel, I'm probably going to use a little bit slow over gear ratio to keep it down in the water column. I still might use 20 pound uh, fluorocarbon, um, but if I'm fishing on like really thick stuff, maybe I'll go up to braid. So this is the Six Sense Divine Braided Swim Jig, and you can see um, it's pretty. It's got a pretty stout hook on it, so that's why I like going with that 20 pound fluorocarbon. One of the main reasons I really like this swim jig is that for that thing right there which is a screw lock and that allows me to literally screw my trailer on um, so I can keep skipping up under docks and stuff like that it won't rip off even after multiple fish it will not come off um, there's only like a couple things I really do to this swim jig to me it's perfect already um, some guys might trim the weed guard a little bit I don't really care about that but the only things I really do so I'm gonna trim the skirt skirts a little long and then I'm gonna put a zip tie on the skirt. And I do this for all of my jigs, my spinner baits, anything with a skirt, I'm gonna do this modification to. So this skirt is kinda of long, not really long, not as long as some other ones, but it is still a little long in my opinion. I really like a compact profile for all my jigs. So what I usually like to do is trim the skirt up to the bend of the hook right there. If you can see that, I, was, I would trim that I'm going to show you the after but this is a brand new swim jig so i'm going to cut it and i'm going to show you exactly what i mean for that and there's a couple reasons i do that um one is i like a smaller profile i think everybody leaves their jigs pretty long but the main reason is that um this long skirt will actually impact your trailer it won't let the water hit it correctly and allow your uh, appendages to move so this is my trimmed up skirt. And some people might think this is really short. Um, I think this is like perfect. Um, and when you trim it, you can actually see that it starts to flare out a little bit more. And I kind of like that too. So if you pump it, it kind of like moves. I don't really know how to say it, but it kind of like kind of pulsates whenever you pump your rod. Um, so that's, that's what I'm talking about. I cut it to the bend of the hook. That maybe is a little little long but that's all right and uh it really just allows your trailer to work better this goes for trawl trailers that goes for craw trailers and swim bait trailers so the other modification that i will do is actually put a zip tie around the rubber uh, banded skirt um, if you fish in places where it's hot enough where you catch enough fish eventually this skirt will rip in half and so i usually take like to take a uh, four inch zip tie 
and I'll wrap it around there, make sure that all the skirt strands are out of the way, and then I'll cut it. And I'll leave this square thingy like right under the weed guard. So that's kind of it. That's my approach to swim jig fishing. I hope I covered enough for the two tactics that I use for swim jigs, the rod, the reel, the line, um, where to use it, what colors to use, what trailers to use, and even some modifications. So if I missed anything, you guys have any questions, be sure to comment below. Um, and I hope you guys liked it. I mean, I kind of learned something, maybe explaining it to you guys that I maybe hadn't thought of before. So um, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Uh, be sure to leave a comment below on what you think or what you really want to learn about next.